Hello, and welcome to my screencast presentation on Twitter. Uh, the topic that I chose for um, this project was Twitter. And in this presentation, I'm going to do a couple of things for you. First thing I want to do is sh um, show you an overview of this topic of Twitter. And um, after I do that, I'm going to show you how Twitter is connected to telecommunications. Thirdly, I want to show you guys how Twitter relates to the practice of teaching and learning in the classroom. Fourthly, I'm going to give an example, which isn't listed here on our, uh, on our uh, requirements here, but I'm going to give an example of how, how I may use Twitter in my own classroom. And lastly, I'm going to give references, a list of references for all this information that I gained in this presentation. So, um, yeah, sit back and enjoy. Um, the first part, or the first thing I want to show you is an overview of, of Twitter. So, if I go to Twitter's homepage, um, and according to Twitter, it's the best way to discover what's new in your world. Um, Twitter is a real-time information network that connects you to the latest information about what you find interesting. And that's the cool thing about it is it allows you to look for stuff or um, gain knowledge and things that whatever that you think is really cool and maybe not what um, the news puts out there but what you think is really interesting in, to you yourself. Um, at the heart of Twitter, small burst information called tweets. You have 140 characters in length at a time. Um, let's see, you can share a lot of, inform a lot of uh, you can share a lot of with a little space. Each, tw each tweet, this is a good thing here, connecting to each tweet is rich details pane that provides additional information, deeper context, embedded media, and embedded media. And this can include um, videos or pictures you can um, embed into your tweet as well. So that's how you can get a deeper context out of what your um, tweet. You can also link um, um, articles to your tweets or blogs that you wrote to your tweets so people can go and learn more about what you're tweeting about. Um, another good thing about Twitter is you don't have to tweet to get value out of Twitter. And this is so true. Uh, you don't have to tweet in order to get something out of Twitter um, because either you tweet a hundred times a day like it says here um, you still have or not you still have access to voices and information surrounding what interests you so you don't have to tweet say you don't have you don't know really what to say or you don't have anything interesting to say on your Twitter account but having that account still um, opens you up to different information that are interest to you so that's the cool thing about Twitter. You don't necessarily have to tweet or put something out there. Um, you can just have an account and use it as a source of information for yourself. So um, that's kind of a little overview of Twitter itself and what it is and how it can work. And there's more to it, but that's a short overview of it. Uh, so the second thing I want to talk to you guys about is how do you, how is Twitter connected to telecommunications? So I thought it was appropriate if I go to Wikipedia since we were just doing a uh, assignment with Wikipedia and how valuable information is and stuff. Um, so on Wikipedia's webpage on Twitter, um, one of the features of Twitter is um, SMS or short message services. Um, so basically text messages. The cool thing about using Twitter is you can use your telephone, a form of telecommunication, in order to tweet your tweets onto your Twitter account. So that feature of uh, Twitter um, is how it's connected to telecommunication. You don't just necessarily have to use a, a computer or go on a computer to do it. You can use your phone to, to um, send off your tweets and receive tweets as well. So um, that's the connection to telecommunications uh, for Twitter. Um, oh, so let me just say, give this little part. Twitter allows users the ability to update their profile by using their mobile phone, either by text messaging or by apps released for certain smartphones and tablets. For instance, I have an app for my Twitter account called Echo Phone that I use to send out my tweets and receive tweets and read, read tweets that, from people that I follow. So that's the connection to telecommunications of Twitter. The third thing I want to tell you guys is how does it relate to teaching and learning. And so what I thought I would do is show you how I use Leslie's resources in order to find um, some valuable information about how it relates to teaching and learning. So I went to Leslie's library and when I clicked on research guides it took me to um, this data, database that I can use to try to narrow down my subject or find something about the subject and I chose databases by subject 
and then um, I chose education and I then chose Eric which um, gives me journals um, that deal with education so I felt that was a, a good place to go to for information and in the tool, or, or I'm sorry, in the, the search box, I just put in Twitter, and I got uh, three pages worth of different articles or journals that had to deal with Twitter itself. And I was scrolling down through here, and the one that popped out to me was um, "Teaching with Twitter, Not for the Faint of Heart," and. This article talks about how um, college professors specifically have been using Twitter um, more and more and what experiences they've had in their classrooms with it. Um, so one of the things I wanted to show you was this paragraph here, um, which says, the moment is telling, let me blow it up a little bit, make it easier to see. Um, the moment is telling, opening up a Twitter power channel in class, which professors at other universities are experimenting with as well alters classroom power dynamics and signals to students that they're in control. Fans of this approach applaud technology that promises to change professors' role from sage on the stage to guide on the side. Those phrases are familiar to educator reformers who have long argued that education must be more interactive to hold the interests of today's students. So um, one of the cool things about using Twitter in your classroom is it enables the students to have a lot more feedback and um, participate in your classroom more and more. And um, that kind of goes uh, um, along with this statement or this portion of the article here, Emboldening Students, um, which I just wanted to read. It says, one student, Ben Van Y, told me, I'm not that outspoken, I'm not that out outspoken in class, so I would never ask a question out loud to the professor. But you can type it in a, an, as an anonymous so nobody really knows if what you're asking is dumb question. That anonymity, anonymity, I can't even say it, leads to questions the professor says he never heard before on a course he has taught for years, but it also raises new issues of classroom management. So the cool thing is it allows t people, students who maybe are more timid and don't really like to share out loud in class to share their opinion in a more um, um, private manner without everyone being able to maybe necessarily know who said what, but they're still being able to add to the classroom discussion, add to um, the learning in the classroom itself. But like it says here at the end, at the end here, this can, lead, this can lead to classroom management problems. And, um, and that's what they talk about right here in this journal, potential for disaster. Um, this... And this, what this, their journal talks about here is this university professor, assistant professor Monica Rankin. Um, she had ex exper she experimented with Twitter as a back channel during her American history class with 90 students. And she says there's clear, certainly the potential for disaster. She said during one class session about abortion, for instance, students began to begin an argument on Twitter that Rankin characterized as non-productive and non-academic. She said her teaching assistant quickly brought the flame war to her attention and we basically changed topics at that point. The university produced a video about Ms. Rankin's class that makes Twitter seem like the next great revolution in teaching. It conveniently leaves out downsides. So they did this video, I'm going to show you the video here in a minute, but if you look at her overall conclusion, this professor, um, she says it was it was a good thing, her experiment with Twitter. Um, her conclusion is that the experiment went pretty well, no real disasters, but, this, but that setting up a back channel is not for every professor or every course, and she goes on to say that it's it kind of goes along with the teacher's personality if they should if they want to do it or not. Um, maybe not best for everyone, but um, it can be a, a real uh, a good tool used in the classroom for like American um, government or American history. So I wanted to show you uh, this video that was produced by this. Um, this new, the, um, let's see, that was produced for Dr. Rankin in her class, and here it is called the Twitter Experiment. I'm not familiar with it, but I, I, I'm not familiar with it, but I, I knew that it was out there. Um, I knew that it was a way that you could use both the computer website and text messaging to post comments. I started to think about how I might be able to incorporate this into the actual classroom setting in my big group of 90 students. 
um, as a way to pull more students into a class discussion that I ordinarily wouldn't be able to do in 50 minutes with that many people. It's been really exciting because usually in, in classes like this, you'll have three people that talk about the discussion material. And so to actually have 30 or 40 people at a time talking about it is really interesting. And then I can go back through the weekend and send them direct messages and ask them to probe kind of further and really think about the material that they've created. I'm really impressed with all of your posts today. You guys did a great job. I do want to bring us back and talk about what some of the uh, most useful things are that you either saw go up here or things that you talked about in discussion, the posts, or what you read. Kids are able to get outside of their comfort zones. Um, they, they're not having to worry about speaking in front of, you know, 200 people, 100 people, however many people are in the class. So I think it really helps. It actually gets the students incorporated into their class and gives them a little more of a drive, I guess, to get into what's going on and discuss things more. People who can get their feet on somewhat in the class where you can have 90 people trying to type up a paper that for everyone else can be a little intimidating, but here all you have to do is type it up, hit enter, or send it in your phone if you're attending one of those local meetings. How are you guys doing? You're gradually losing faith in humanity? All right, my work here is done. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we're putting stuff that college students are paying for to learn out on the internet, and that college students are researching out on the internet for other people to find. And I'm really big on Wikipedia and the ability for you to find whatever you need to know on the internet. And for us to put more history knowledge out there, it really gets all the discussion pretty quick. The significant terms that we've talked about in our discussions, the feedback, if we can go back on it, make a pretty good study what was most important to study that day. What I have seen is that you know, nearly everyone participates in some way, either in class on their computers or cell phones, or they do their handwritten comments and give them to, to the TA, and, and she posts them after class is over. I don't have a laptop with me, so I'm using my phone. We got 50 minutes of on time call on every single student, so this allows you know for a lot of information to get disseminated quickly. I think it's actually probably better this way because I know there's some kids where they would want to have something to say, but they're a little bit shy or standoffish where they don't always get it. So this gives a better opportunity for people to still express their views on what's going on and what's being discussed. 140 characters does limit um, the, the types of comments that they're able to make and the types of evidence and argument that they're able to make to back up their opinions. And um, there are some issues that we're discussing in class that, that do require a more in-depth approach to explaining one's position. But on the other hand, um, oftentimes there's a lot of miscellaneous information that students think they need to throw in that kind of muddle up the idea that they're trying to portray. So having to keep them limited to 140 characters does require students to get it to the absolute central point. So I think it really forces them to focus. I was, uh, I was traveling one week and so the TA led the, the Twitter discussion in class, but while away in Santa Fe, New Mexico, um, I was able to log on to Twitter during our class period, during our class time, and follow the class discussion from another state. And um, as much as I could, I contributed as many comments as I could to what I saw the comments being posted um, on the Twitter board that week. Uh, my understanding is that students in class thought that was actually kind of cool. They, they, were, they thought that was, that was pretty exciting that even though I wasn't here, that I was still kind of participating in the class and giving them feedback on the types of things that they were saying. Um, it, was, it was really useful for me, too, to kind of see how this works from afar. This is, this is a very different format um, than your typical history discussion or history class uh, format. And I had no idea how it was going to work. Um, I think I remember saying, it's going to be messy, and I'm just going to have to come to grips with the fact that it's going to be messy, but messy doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be bad. All right, so that was her experiment using um, Twitter in the classroom. Now, I was wanting to show you guys how I may use it in my own classroom this coming year. I already actually have a Twitter account and I have kind of messed around using Twitter in my class more as a uh, way to give information to students about upcoming events or tests in, in the class itself. But um, one way I thought about using it this coming up year was 
using as a kind of a bell ringer to get discussion going about maybe the start of a new chapter that we're going to cover. So this is an example. This is my Twitter page. And um, an example, what I might do is here is put um, a question or statement in order for the students to answer. Um, so for like chapter one, I may to start the class say, can you guys define government in words and also identify ways government affects you and services government provides. And I would just um, click on the tweet button here and it would be posted on the, on the internet and either by them using their computers or their um, cell phones, they would be able to respond. And I would even allow students who don't, maybe not have a cell phone, they can still participate by raising their hand. But this just gives them another option of how or another option to participate maybe who for those kids who don't like to talk out in class or give their opinion in front of everyone in the class. So that's an example of how I may use it in my class this coming up year. Um, and I think that's really it for this uh, presentation. So thank you and I hope um, you're able to gain some valuable information out of it.